The following video describes Fort Zed, Fort Collins Zero Energy District, and the Renewable and Distributed Systems Integration Project, which is made possible through a grant from the U.S. Department of Energy. Fort Zed is an initiative to convert downtown Fort Collins and the main campus of Colorado State University into a net zero energy district. And the idea of a zero energy district is it's a district that generates as much energy as it uses on an annual basis from local resources. And the RDSI grant is important because it starts that process. And what it does is shows from a research and development standpoint and a testing standpoint that we can reduce peak energy demand in this district by a significant amount, in this case five megawatts. While this won't achieve a zero energy district in and of itself, it will certainly start moving us in that direction. In order to have a zero energy district, you need a diversity of resources. Sometimes you need to make electricity, sometimes you need to reduce electric use. So the purpose of this study is to see how can we make all of these different components work together to deal with times of electric system peak. Electric systems have peaks similar to rush hour peaks. We have a hot July day, bright beautiful sun shining, 90 degrees and climbing. People are turning on their air conditioners, maybe turning on the television. Businesses using electricity. Those are the kinds of things that create an electric system peak. One dream we all have is to utilize the power plants more effectively. Right now, at night, they slow way down and shut down, and during the day, they work really too hard. It's probably between 20 and 30 percent of all of the capital investment in electric generation is used just during that small number of peak hours. Our power supplier is Platte River Power Authority. Their base load unit is a large coal power plant. They run that continuous, 24-7. When we are experiencing an electric peak, when customers are demanding more electricity, they will start to turn on their gas turbines. A gas turbine might be thought of as a large stationary jet engine with a generator at the back of it. So it's a way to meet these short peak time periods. Peak impacts you in terms of what you have to do to generate electricity. Typically, you have to move to a less efficient resource. It impacts the electric distribution system, the entire network. In a road, you have to build the highway so that you can handle that peak traffic. On the electric system, we have the same situation. When we have those peaks, that's what we have to build the electric system for. So if we can reduce peak loads, then we can prevent the building of new power plants and all of the CO2 emissions that come from creating more electricity. We have a number of partners in this Fort Zed project. Those partners include the city of Fort Collins, Larimer County, Colorado State University at their main campus, New Belgium Brewing, and then finally the CSU Engines Lab. The Integrate facility at the Engines and Energy Conversion Lab is a joint uh, operation between CSU and Sparay. And this is a world-class facility for doing power research. At this lab, we're installing several generators, and those generators will be used as part of the peak shaving experiment, which is the core of RDSI. This study is focused on one substation of the utility. So the Linden substation is the substation that distributes energy from Platte River Power Authority to New Belgium, to the eastern portion of CSU, and also to the Larimer County buildings. We wanted to get a limited number of partners who could actively participate and who had the potential to have fairly large loads. Out in the power grid as a whole, there are many small generators which are not used at all for power generation to the grid. Things like backup generation, at hospitals or data centers. The idea behind the RDSI project is to utilize those distributed generators just during that small number of peak hours. Now as a side effect of doing that distributed generation, it makes it easier to integrate renewables. So you can put PV panels on more roofs, you can put small wind turbines spread around the community. And we also want to demonstrate that it's possible to show that peak reduction in an uh, environmentally responsible manner. The RDSI project uses current technology like diesel engines. Those are relatively dirty 
The same control system could be applied to new upcoming technologies like fuel cells, storage systems, natural gas engines, and others. Some of our partners are bringing equipment. Woodward Governor is an example of that. Well, we're very happy to be part of the Fort Zed Jumpstart Energy Project. Uh, Woodward has a generator control platform called the EasyGen, and this is used globally to start and stop and synchronize generators for critical applications. We have a product for clean burning natural gas buses and trucks. We make wind converters for large wind turbines, and we also have a system for treating diesel exhausts to clean up emissions. So part of the problem with the historical structure of the current power grid is that it's built around having a small number of large generating plants and a large number of small consumers. What is the smart grid? What, what does that mean? The old grid is just a one-way path and it's based on very little knowledge about what is going on out there at the customer. What just got turned on? What could be turned off? What other resources does the customer have? Today's electric system doesn't know that. And where we're going with renewables and this other distributed integration is we're starting to have power flow in multiple directions. This is a real new way of thinking about the control systems and how do you orchestrate many small resources spread through the grid. One of the issues that we need to be able to deal with um, in smart grid research is being able to put more renewable energy on the grid. And the difficulty with that is that renewable energy being generated from uh, variable sources like you know, uh, wind and solar is not as predictable. We get you know, uh, uh, very variable output power. And this is our um, wind turbine simulator. And here I have a diesel engine connected to a generator and I can essentially play a profile of a wind turbine into this diesel engine. So this could be recorded data from the field. Now the diesel engine will play the role of the wind spinning the rotor on the wind turbine and then the generation will produce that variable output power and that feeds into the rest of the grid system here at Intergrid that gives us the capability to simulate an entire grid that includes any mix of renewable and traditional generation. A big part of this project is really the coordination of all of these very different types of resources. Ray is providing software to be able to capture key information that we need about what is available, uh, how long is it available for, and how much capacity it can provide to the system. And so if you can imagine this picture here applied four other times to represent the total of five site partners that are involved in this project, it's how do you get the information that you need to be able to achieve the peak reductions that we're interested in. Brendel Group is an engineering and sustainability consulting firm here in Fort Collins. And one of our roles in the RDSI project is to help coordinate the operations of Sparay's control system with the partner sites. So we help the partners identify those assets that could be controlled to help reduce the peak demand. This information then becomes part of Sparay's database. The challenge, of course, is to identify those loads that are non-essential or do not have a negative impact on thermal comfort or partners' operations. Not only do we have a situation where hardware and equipment has to work, where communications has to work, it also has to make business sense. We jumped at the chance to participate in the RDSI grant because producing all of our own energy on site, being a net zero energy producer, has long been a goal of ours. We put together close to one megawatt in assets, uh, which includes both on-site generation and load shedding. For our on-site generation, we installed 200 kilowatts of solar photovoltaic. Advanced Energy has been a great partner to us on the project. They actually donated the inverter for our PV array. We have a cogen, an engine that produces both heat and power that runs off of methane. And we're also going to do a better job of capturing the heat from the engine and using it during the process. This mix of renewable energy, of on-site traditional generation, and of load reduction can all be present on one site. The system is constantly monitoring what's going on at the feeder level. It is also looking at what the individual partners are saying is available, uh, identifying if there is a peak that is imminent and evaluating whether or not controls should be implemented at a particular time. 
we are tying into the smart grid so that when we get a signal from the city that the utility is drawing at peak power, we'll be able to shut these loads off. So they're reducing their consumption of electricity just by turning things off. This is always the most desirable uh, because it doesn't cost anything. There's no pollution associated with it. Uh, it's basically free energy savings. We would look at then what the other partners are doing and go through a similar process with each of those partners. We have two assets that are going to be part of our demonstration site. The first one is the fountain here at the Larimer County Justice Center. We're going to be able to shut this fountain off to conserve electricity during peak load times. And then, of course, when the load goes down, we can turn it back on again automatically as well. We've just chosen one element to use as a demonstration. But really, you could identify any number of these assets within your building and control it according to the demand and the signal received from the utility. Now we're here on the roof of the Larimer County Courthouse Office Building, located at 200 West Oak. And this is the location of our second RDSI project. This array is uh, 26.82 kW. Now here, we're just trying to demonstrate the ways in which you can take renewable energy assets, like PV, and time into the grid, whether you're bringing energy into the building, or if the building wasn't using it all, send it back out. In the case of CSU, they have a number of areas where they can reduce their load on different buildings by turning down the air handling units um, in those buildings. Um, they have quite a bit of solar generation. They also have uh, three backup generators. We're in, down in the basement of NESB building. This is one of our typical natural gas emergency generators. We'll bring this generator on along with the greenhouse generator, one at our, our cooling plant. We're concerned about noise generation, the incremental carbon footprint. This is natural gas, so it burns pretty clean, but is it really more clean and more efficient than running the power plants back you know, at Rawhide? Uh, we'll find that out. Electric vehicles are potentially a more and more important factor in how we consume electricity. So there'll be a Ford Escape hybrid and a Toyota Prius hybrid, uh, both of which will have their battery packs upgraded so that they can run for a limited time as pure electric vehicles. What might evolve in the future would be to use those as a resource that has the potential to be used for transportation, if not being used for transportation, yet fully charged, a resource that can provide power into the electric system. That's where we're headed. That's the new vision of where the, the smart grid will take us. It's a three-year project. The first two years, we're involved with getting things operational, getting things set up. Our operation year will be calendar year 2011. Not only are we building out a smart grid, but using local talent to do that. We've estimated that the initial phase, the RDSI project, will um, create and sustain about 300 jobs locally. It gets us started, and it'll be a great demonstration to show what's possible in the future.